Hello everyone, I'm Miriam Knight, and I'm pleased to be speaking with Micaiah Hart, an author, urban shaman, and avid sportswoman. Micaiah was born in Scotland. She worked on organic farms in Wales, lived in communes, and trained as a mechanic in England in her 20s. She became a committed and active environmentalist in the 70s, long before that word was well known. She moved to Northern California in the 80s and built her house with her own hands out of recycled lumber. She also ran organic market gardens and was the first person to raise organic free-range hogs commercially in the United States. She started writing books in the 90s and developed her skills as a shamanic practitioner. Her most recent book is Life, Lies and Sex, a user's guide to being in a body, which is an examination of the true nature of reality. Welcome, Micaiah. I'm delighted to be speaking with you. Well, I'm delighted to be on the show. Thank you so much for asking me on. Micaiah, tell me what is the ultimate aim of your work and your writing? I describe it in various ways, but I would say that ultimately I want to help people to operate from a place of trust instead of fear. And there are several ways I do that. Um, I, I believe it's very important for all of us to get in touch with the 98% of reality that is unseen. And there's huge potential when we do get in touch with that and when we allow universal energy to move through us. And I help people to do that by leading shamanic journeys. Um, it's a, shamanic journeys are a little like a nighttime dream, um, except that you're in control. Um, and they're very different experiences for different people. But the, um, the real key is getting in touch with your own inner wisdom and your personal guides and allowing, allowing is really the right word here, allowing um, some greater part of yourself to be in charge of what goes on. And when you practice doing that in shamanic journeys, you can begin to allow it in your life. And, you know, the, the orchestration of the universe is really best left to um, something greater than our small selves. So um. That's very funny because we human beings always like to be in control and we think yeah. we know better than God and nature. <laughs> yes. yes, and we've made a little bit of a mess on this planet yes. by thinking we know better. Yes. Mm -hmm. in, in your book, Life, Lies and Sex, it's primarily about how to live fully and how to be fully alive. Now, what does sex have to do with that? Well, sex um, in some ways can be seen as a metaphor for life. Um, it's, sex is primarily about allowing the body to be in charge and then if you are able to give yourself over totally to the, that experience, you go somewhere that is far beyond the body. Um, and it's really about, again, allowing energy to flow freely and trusting that it knows what it's doing. And really in life, we, we absolutely need to learn how to let energy move through us freely. Um, for instance, when we're, um, well, I usually refer to it as choosing what we get and getting what we choose, but it could also be referred to as the art of manifestation. So when we, decide that we really want something, um, we need to allow that desire to flow freely through our bodies, through our bodies, allowing our bodies to respond to the delight that we feel when, um, when we imagine that we have what we want. Um, you know, we may want to jump for joy or um, laugh out loud or, or scream. Um, and those are the kinds of things that uh, we're not supposed to do when we're, um, when we're civilized adults. <laughs> so we learn to restrain the free flow of energy. And, you know, we do need to, in the world at large, we need to 
to allow it appropriately. I mean, there, you might feel a great surge of anger moving through you, and it, it really might not be appropriate to get angry at that moment. Mm. So um, we do need to learn to um, control it, or at least make it wait sometimes. But when, when we really can allow that energy to flow through us freely, it's, and, and we can get rid of the blocks that all of us have in place, then we'll find that um, there's an amazing level of wisdom can flow through us. And I believe anyone can, can touch into that. So you're drawing a picture of using one's body almost as a cosmic uh, antenna for manifestation and the uh, the energy the emotion the the sexual energy if you will the creative energy perhaps is the power source um, that we give um, uh, I guess uh, energy to the image that we're trying to manifest is that kind of the way it works yes that's that's um that's certainly one way of looking at it. I mean, we can, you can look at it from many different angles. Energy is power, is, is power is energy, is life force. And whether it manifests um, sexually or whether it manifests in, you know, creatively, whether it's, you know, writing, dancing, skiing, having children, whatever, whatever way it manifests, it's still energy moving through us. And that's life moving through us. So that's a lot of why I talk about being fully alive, allowing life to move through us, is really the basis of the art of being human, the art of choice. Um, because you might say that, say, learning to choose what we get and get what we choose is the basis of, well, I use the word happiness here, but perhaps happiness is is a little bit of a trite word. Um, I could use the word joy, the, the basis of experiencing joy. But again, I want to stress that joy and happiness, they're, um, when you're living life fully and feelings move through you, even when you might label those feelings as feelings of joy, they may appear to other people as almost ferocious in their intensity because we're so unused to being fully alive to allowing energy to move through us fully that it it feels um it can it can definitely feel quite frightening when we first allow it so um joyful is and hap joy joy and happy are not quite the right words there does this have anything to do with kundalini energy well kundalini energy again is is energy is power, is life force. Um, kundalini energy is just one way that somebody has designated a particular flow of energy. Um, mm -hmm. Well, one way that a certain system, like the yogic system, perhaps, um, have called kund kundalini mm -hmm. energy. And it's about the energy specifically rising up from the base of the spine, of the spine through the top of the head. Um, I certainly know people who've experienced that when they're being sexual. Um, and I know people who've experienced it when they're dancing. Um, it's just a particularly intense um, and sometimes very sudden experience of life force moving through us. So what you're talking about is a more sustained um, living in joy, I guess you'd call it. Mm -hmm. Well, energy is like water. It flows in many different ways. So it can flow fast and furious and have, you know, then, you know, have, have a waterfall perhaps occurs or a flood and it's like a, a, a very massive kind of flow. Um, uh, but it can also be very slow and steady, like a, um, a river that's not very steep, but is in full flood it's it there's a, a sense of implacability to it the water flows implacably mm. and so but it, even though it's implacable it's quite slow so um 
you know, there's a lot of different ways it can flow. And there may be a, a, a short and intense build-up, or there may be a very slow build-up um, without any particularly obvious release. So, you know, it's, uh, it's different at different times for different people. So, um, what most commonly prevents people from um, having this uh, a good energy flow and, and being able to manifest what they want? Well, I would say the first reason is because um, we, we have been taught um, that it's not okay to allow the body to be in control. You know, the rational brain is supposed to be in control. And I, I, the rational brain is a wonderful thing, but it's actually not meant to be in charge. Wisdom is, it's a physical sensation. You know, a, a quick brain can make you clever, but it can't make you wise. Wisdom comes from somewhere else, and it certainly can come through the body. A sense of right and wrong can be a physical sensation felt in the gut, or it, it varies with different people, but sometimes the throat, the heart. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that's certainly one way that people disallow a free flow of energy is because they're too much in their rational brains and they've been taught to do that from when they're very, very young. And um, they, you know, they, they don't know how to reverse that. And it, it, it takes trust. You have to trust that actually the body does know what's right. I mean, you know what's right, but perhaps not the you that is based in the rational brain. I think the um, lack of trust in ourselves, in our own wisdom, is just endemic in our society. Everything uh, kind of conspires to undermine our self-esteem and our self-trust. How do you best go about building that? <laughs> and, you know, in this world we're all so busy, and if we're not um, busy working, then you know we're busy relating to other people, or we're watching TV, or we're reading a book, or we're on the phone. Uh, um, I have spent an enormous amount of time alone in natural surroundings, and that has enabled me to get to know myself in a on a very deep level. So I can tell when I'm when I'm experiencing a sensation that comes from some source that is beyond my smaller self. It's very hard to talk about this because we never have talked about it. We don't have the right words to it. But um, a lot of people know the phrase higher self or source. I mean, they're not quite, higher self especially, is not quite the right phrase because um, when we're talking about that, that greater part of ourselves, it, there are actually no comparatives. It's not higher or greater, it's just another part of ourselves. But in any case, I think it's only when you're willing to spend time alone with yourself that you can really get in touch with that. Mm -hmm. However you think of it, you know, inner wisdom or universal energy or source or higher self, however you think of it, it's essential to um, to get to know that part of yourself. So what do you um, hope that readers will take away from your book, Life, Lies and Sex? Well, one thing is I hope they will understand that we are told a great deal of lies in this culture. I mean, that's the other thing that constantly misleads us is, you know, we're told this is how you're meant to behave and you know, this is what you're meant to do with your life. And we are all incredibly different and some of us, well, actually these days I would say quite a lot of people, the average Western lifestyle is not fulfilling for them and they need to find something else that is. And that's a personal thing. It's really a personal thing. So you've got to get in touch with your personal wisdom. I do strongly recommend something like a shamanic journey. And on my website, you can access a...
putting of my manic journey. And there are, of course, I recommend that someone is actually present the first time that you do one. It's it's more powerful setting. Mikaya, can you tell us what your website is? MikayaHeart.org. Uh, and, and that's spelled? M-I-K-A-Y-A-H-E-A-R-T. All done. Oh, one word. And um, it's .org, not mm-hmm. .com. Um, well. Yes, I, I can be contacted from my website. And I'm happy to travel to different places if people are willing to organize um, a shamanic journey and, you know, organize a setting. And um, uh, But yes, I'm, I'm willing to travel as long as my expenses are paid. So. Well, I expect they could probably lure you if there were good windsurfing available nearby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> kite surfing, yes. Kite, kite surfing, surfing. Yes. okay. Yes. yes, I'm completely addicted to kite surfing. <laughs> now, now, I will say kite surfing is an experience for me where I am completely in touch with universal energy or whatever you want to call it. And um, sports certainly are, they, they enable a lot of people to um, get in touch with that experience of just it everything is real you're totally focused on the moment Mm -hmm. and you're totally present with well in my case with the wind and the water and there's there's nothing else and that's very profound and you know i know that um traditionally um a lot of uh, so-called spiritual people look down on on people who practice sports you know extreme sports but um truthfully they we're really going to the same place. They're, they're taking us to a very similar place that so-called spiritual people want to go to. Mm-hmm. Well, my goodness, um, you have put it all into this latest book of yours, Life, Lies, and Sex, A User's Guide to Being in a Body. And it sounds like you're making the most of that knowledge and are just ready and willing and able to impart it. So if you'd like to get in touch with Micaiah Hart, go to her website, which is again, Micaiah, please tell us. MikayahHart.org. M-I-K-A-Y-A-H-E-A-R-T. Micaiah Hart, thank you so much for being with us. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show, Miriam.